Hi, welcome to ToddFun.com where I do what I think is fun. Today's fun is a, a friend who uh, has a jacuzzi hot tub that has malfunctioned. I don't normally get into fixing a lot of things, but this one seemed interesting uh, to try. What it was is uh, essentially the control board, which is a very expensive replacement part for a jacuzzi or a hot tub, I should say. Uh, it controls the heater and the pump using these large relays right here. Uh, it has intelligence and we'll cover that here in a second on how to turn on the pump and when to go to the high pump and the low pump and when to go to the heat and no heat and what temperatures to turn on and off. And it's not that complicated, uh, but we're going to discuss uh, what, I, what the failure was and possible solutions and hopefully a, a solution. Uh, pretty much ruled out fixing the board and we'll see that here in a second. Uh, so let's go to the bench and cover those things and, and then get on to what I think will make this work. So this is the main control board and the reason I don't think it's worth replacing is this is a 1994 hot tub. Uh, I think it was made by Coleman's or Coleman derivative and it, it's just it's basically time to throw it away really but it's in it's in a friend's backyard and and they do use it pretty regular uh, provided it can you know and especially in the winter time when they keep it covered and can heat it and, and it can control its own temperature and everything uh, so the 150 to 200 dollars to get this control board wouldn't be worth it uh, not to mention uh, the the board that you actually use to control it from from the tub area itself is has been hacked up quite a bit over its lifetime and it is another hundred and like well about a hundred dollars for this just this board here uh, someone before me had a go at this uh, because apparently uh, after all the years it gets it gets it basically gets good corrosion damage and these were like soft buttons previously and someone replaced drilled it out and put in these uh, larger click buttons and that was a corrosion fix and I think that's what caused the destruction of this in that when I when they did this mod it 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 didn't it didn't fix anything and the display went wanky and so when I took apart and looked really carefully at these I noticed they had drilled through some traces and they had actually shorted some traces and so I think they did some pretty good damage uh, to what this controls now I did go through and look at this real carefully and decide that these buttons are, are not interfacing with this pick controller right here this pick controller is just to run the display uh, there is a, essentially a six line phone uh, RJ uh, they're all RJ12 jacks RJ12 cable and and they just use that to make it easy to connect to the board in, in an RJ12 similar to the RJ11's but the RJ12 is um, provided I'm not saying that wrong is uh, for the six p is six wire as opposed to normal four wire and this is six wire uh, so you're gonna you're gonna get some power and ground and then you're gonna get a couple data lines that come up and talk to this pick and then you're gonna get a couple lines one one for this button one for this button but these buttons go directly through this wire back to this control board these buttons do not interface with this pick once these buttons are pressed it tells these the microcontroller on this board uh, what mode to be in that tells this pick on this display board to change the display into different modes such as setting the temperature high and low and or turning the jets on and off and uh, like I say th this this board is fully functional at this point now that I've fixed the traces and stuff it didn't seem to damage this this does still you plug this in and it will still display the temperature that it is uh, running at and it will actually control it to the uh, the board will control the whole hot tub to those preset numbers unfortunately when they were originally working with this mod they managed to set the temperature pretty low and then once this mod was done it that that killed the micro inputs on this micro and then they couldn't change the temperature anymore that is the temperature was set too low to be a hot tub anymore and this controller though these buttons work now they do feed through this RJ12 and they do go to the micro and tell the micro hey I want to change the temperature the micro is ignoring it and that's where I certainly gave up on this board if the micro on this board is going to ignore these button presses uh, you can't change the temperature anymore to the micro and you can't 
uh, turn the jets high and low uh, because you can't that signal is being ignored by the micro as well. Not a lot to discuss here other than what does this board do and how can we replace it. Uh, well, as you can see, there's some large relays here, and they control the power components, such as the power, the power to the pump, and the power to uh, the heater. Um, the pump actually uses uh, two of these relays, one for high speed, one for low speed. And normally you would just press a button and it would go into high speed and press a button and go into low speed. So there's that not working, of course. If you had to replace this board, this is the number you would quote because that would tell uh, the replacement board uh, that it was identical to this coding that's inside this controller, the program in here. And that program is monitoring these things for safety, proofing, if you will. It's going to say, well, what's, what have you set using the front end? What did you set you wanted for a high and low temperature? That gets stored in there, of course. And then, and then it monitors that temperature, turning the uh, relay on and off for the heater. But it won't do that unless it gets a few proofs. One of the proof is the second couple wires here uh, that go over to a temperature sensor in the water flow um, pipe. If that gets too high, it will turn off the heater knowing that something's wrong, it's overheating um, inside the water flow pipe where the, where the heater coil is. The other proof is, is there flow? And there's like a valve, a flapper valve or something that's in that same water feed pipe that opens and closes and changes a potentiometer. And if that isn't uh, reading a certain low ohms, then this controller knows that the water's not flowing in the feed pipe and will also then turn off the heater. Uh, and, and that's just safety stuff. So there's lots of safety and some just robust building of this thing. And I, like I said, if, if this hadn't been modified and damaged and shorted, I don't think it would have taken out the micro, the pins to the micro. Uh, like I said, I think all they did was short out the, the microcontroller pins and destroyed the input to the controller that was sensing what you were doing up here with these buttons. Uh, so there's a lot here, and to replace all of that would be, well, cost prohibitive. I mean, you might as well just buy a new controller or throw the tub away, uh, especially a 94, you know, tub that's so darn old. Well, there is something we can do. I Meaning this is just sitting out in someone's backyard. We can just replace the, the raw functionality. What I mean by raw functionality is I'm not really worried about this thing sitting in someone's backyard um, having a problem. What I'm worried about is can I turn the temperature, can I turn the uh, heater on and off using a relay, using, and can I, um, can I turn the high jet, low jets off so that when the person comes in to use the tub, they can flip a switch and go into high mode. Well, technically, I can reuse a lot of this board and some of the power on this board in that if I can create a temperature controller that monitors the temperature of the tub, ignoring the, what's called the high limit of the heater element, I'm just going to ignore it, and I'm also going to ignore the flow. I'm just going to ignore those safety features. It's sitting in someone's backyard, so whatever. Um, at most, it would just burn up the heater coil anyway. And who cares if we damaged the 1994 hot tub. So at any rate, um, if I can have a temperature controller that can turn the relay on for, for the heater when it demands heat, and then turn it off when it reaches that heat, and then stay off until it cools off to that lower temperature and then turns back on again. That would be control number one. At the same time, I can use that same controller to turn on the, f the low flow for the pump. And essentially that's it. I'm done. The, the tub would heat and cool properly because you'd be able to set that with a new, with a, with a new uh, control board. And I was thinking maybe you could use an Arduino or something like that. And then, and then just another switch that essentially just overrides that as a physical switch. You get in the tub, you flip a switch, and then, and then the tub is, is going to have the high, you turn on the relay that's on this board to do high pump flow so the jets work and everything. And then when they get out, they just, they just have to, like they normally would, they'd have to turn off the high jets. And then the heating and mechanism would take over again. So rather than you know creating an Arduino and writing the code and all the monitoring and all that nonsense, I, I watch other channels on YouTube and one of them was Big Clive and he reviewed a uh, high low temperature controller out of China that cost five dollars. 
and I was I just remembered in my head I'd seen that video that Big Clive have done. I'll put a link to it in the show notes below uh, to Big Clive's review of this. Uh, but essentially what it is is it's a five dollar uh, high low temperature controller. It controls it shuts on and off at it shuts off at a high temperature and shuts on at a low temperature. Um, technically you can reverse that if you wanted to if you're cooling, but we're only talking about using this in a heating mode. And so it comes with a nice display which will tell you what your high and low temperatures are and what your current temperature is. Uh, it comes with a, it doesn't come with a box, but it comes with a plastic uh, bezel and a stick-on display. And then once that's, once you mount that and, and bolt it inside of a control box, then you'll be able to do temperature up and down, go into set mode. And so then you set a high temperature in Celsius, a low temperature in Celsius, and, and then uh, it'll display the Celsius temperature here. And they get that hysteresis going on so that so that your tub will stay between like say 100 and 102 or 100 104 or, or 99 and whatever whatever you find is comfortable and most economic and this has it has its own sensor and so if i can get that you know essentially just drop that in the tub you you could do that or maybe i can reuse one of the uh, sensors that hook up to this i'll test to see if this is similar or functions the same either way that will work and the back of this uh, controller has a relay on it and it's only got the one relay so you'll have power and then you have the relay coming you know, basically you're just switching a, a circuit between these two points over here with this relay and based off the temperature that's coming in here and this relay is going to have to control both the relay on here that turns on the pump and turns on the heater but I don't really want to drive all that through here necessarily, though I may think about that based on, the, based on the specs of this relay. I may go ahead and do that, but then I'd have to, eh, I don't know if I really want to do that. There's another option. There's the control chip on here, which I believe I can still keep powered. I can cut some traces, and I can simply control the, uh, the, the control chip on here, and this control chip will in turn control these relays um, based on the inputs of these controls. That will also give me an easy way to flip a switch to control this chip to then turn the high and low jets on. I also might be able to uh, power this from this um, if I can find that the power on here is, is, is acceptable for here. So those are the things we're going to do. We're going to see if we can tap into this and control this chip to control this based on these temperatures and another switch to override for jets and then get power from this. Should be that simple. It's going to take a few parts. So I'm going to call this part one so you can, you can see this one and decide whether or not you want to watch the rest of these parts. So I'll label them part one, two, three, whatever it takes, um, including um, seeing this thing working instead of a test rig uh, as different parts. So thanks for joining, and if you like this one, uh, give me a thumbs up and follow along for the next parts. Bye.